Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a bar chart of a multiple response set in Python 3, specifically using here Jupyter Lab. So this is a chart that you can create something like this, um, where there are where you had, for example, a question where multiple answers were acceptable. So um, this one was actually made with SPSS, but the result will be fairly similar. So here people could choose different cinemas, uh, which one they visited, and they could of course um, visit more than one. So how to do that with Python? Well, um, I need some example data. So that's a CSV file, as you can see. So I'll first need to import that. I'm going to import it as a pandas data frame. Uh, if you've never used pandas before or any of the packages, uh, then use pip install, uh, exclamation sign pip install in the name of the package. And then you can import it and I'm going to abbreviate it to pd. Then I can use that abbreviation and then the function, and in this case read csv and head will show me the first five uh, records. Now, the fields of interest here are at the end, so Munt Movies, Tushinsky, Action Arena. Those are different cinemas in Amsterdam, and a 1 here would indicate that the person did go to that cinema, and a 0 that he or she didn't. So, let's combine just those in their own data frame, so that we don't have to deal with all the other ones. And um, I want to show how many respondents visited each cinema. And since I coded it as 0 and 1, I can simply actually uh, sum things up. So uh, if I do a my frequencies and then a sum, then I know that 81 people actually visited the Munt, uh, 45 uh, movies, etc. Now this is fake data, so... Um, these are not accurate or anything, but it, it gives a nice ID. Now, to store the names of the variables uh, themselves, I use the index, so then I get the names. And I could use the sum, since I coded it as 0, uh, as no, and 1 as yes. But if it was coded differently, so if you used 1 for yes and 2 for no, for example, um, we would need to sum for each column if a specific value is met. So that can also be done, um, and that's what I show here. So I choose my variables. Uh, I want to count the ones, and this you can then of course always change. I create two empty arrays, and then I'm going to loop over um, each of my variables, and every time this is checking if it's meeting that value that it needs to count. And that should give me the exact same results as I had earlier. And you can see that these match the ones that were up here. Um, then we to finally create a diagram. I just want a diagram of these with the names underneath so I can use a uh, pie plot. So I'll import that and then I can create the bar chart. Fairly straightforward, just uh, PLT for a uh, pie plot. Bar, my names, uh, those are the labels, the frequencies, the heights, and you can choose any color you want, of course, and I use a blue edge color, but you can change that. If you like, you can also rotate the X uh, axis, um, and it's nice to give the Y axis its own label, so that people know what's over here. Uh, be careful with percentages, though, because um, I have a different amount of answers than of uh, people. So um, I want the percentage based on the number of respondents, not by the sum of responses. So these, I don't want to add up all of these and then divide each of them by that total. I just want to know how many people visited the Munt, for example. So I want to divide by the number of cases that I have. The, those percentages will then not add up to 100%. Well, let's first uh, calculate those percentages. And they won't add up to 100% because people could visit more than one cinema. I do want to show these. Uh, so same as before. And then you have the percentage bar chart. I would report usually underneath here, depending on my audience, that uh, the percentages do not add up to 100% because people could select more than one option. Otherwise, you get some... Um, people nagging about, hey, the percentages don't add up to 100. Yes, because it they could choose more than one option. Uh, you can also use pandas if you like. So pandas uh, uh, has a plot function, and then you get something like this, and you can probably change these as well, but I personally would simply go for this one. 
Okay, and that was kind of it. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.